For months, we've been hearing the New York Jets will select Zach Wilson with the second pick of the NFL draft. But our Jason LaCampora is not 100% convinced, and it's an option worth considering. One of the questions regarding Wilson is how he'll do as the face of a New York franchise after growing up in Utah and playing at BYU. And what if the Jets switch things up and go for Justin Fields? Our Ryan Wilson has New York taking Wilson in his latest mock as we take a look at the top five quarterbacks, but nobody knows for sure. I actually spoke to Ryan Wilson this morning, and he is sticking with this as his top five quarterbacks in the draft. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence going first overall to the Jags, and he does have Zach Wilson going to the Jets, but let's get Jason LaCampora's take on this. So, JLC, you wrote the article. Help me out here. All I've been hearing is Jets, Zach Wilson, <laughs> Zach Wilson, Jets. Why might this not be the case? Justin Fields might be a better prospect. And I, I know that's, uh, I, I guess I'm crazy for saying that uh, at a time when everyone wants to tell you that Justin Fields is maybe the fifth of this big five and the guy who could plummet. I don't believe that'll be the case whatsoever. And, and when, again, just in my conversations with people around the league, People who aren't going to be in this quarterback derby in the top 10. Many of them believe that Justin Fields is definitely the second best quarterback prospect in this draft. And they look at the expectations he faced and the program he played in and the competition he played against and how he fared and the athletic skill set uh, and, and the leadership and the determination and, and they're kind of scratching their heads saying, where did, where did we go from what we saw him do in the playoffs to now where we're supposed to believe that Trey Lance, who, you know, barely played in the subdivision and, um, you know, Wilson have just blown by him. And, oh, not, and, and Mac Jones, who nobody thought was going in the first round, you know, three, four months ago. So I, I would just say this is the time of year when I try to question assumptions and I take a step back and say, why am I so convinced of this? And am I so convinced of it on, of, because of absolute fact or because of narrative? And sometimes those narratives are very accurate. And this one may be. And if I was doing a mock today, I would put Wilson still at two. Um, but there's people in that building who like Justin Fields. And remember, Fields and Lance just completed their final workouts quite recently, way before these narratives were baked in. I was talking to Ryan Wilson today as well, and he said that his new move is to have the quarterback have the last pro day because that's what the narrative turns into. Oh, this guy's the best. This guy's the best. This guy's going to go and get drafted higher. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I think a lot of this is um, who's the most recent person to flash, right? And there haven't been any games played in forever. And we don't have players able to make visits like in a normal year. You're not able to have private workouts like in a normal year. A lot of the sort of normal tells aren't there because the process is so radically different. Uh, and, and so, yeah, these teams, they're, they're human beings, these scouts, these evaluators. And, and there is human nature to say, well, the last great thing I saw um, might resonate a little bit. But that's why you have to go back to the film. You have to go back to what led you um, in this process in the first place and really evaluate which one of these kids, not named Trevor Lawrence, has the best shot of becoming um, a, a, a franchise quarterback. And I think those who are discounting Justin Fields are doing so, um, in many cases, for ridiculous reasons. Well, anything goes this time of year. We know that in the NFL, and that's what makes this all so exciting. So something to keep an eye on for sure. Next up, many have projected the Steelers to take a running back in the first round. You say not so fast because the class is so strong in 2021. Why would you wait? Um, they've got a lot of needs. The Steelers know they have a lot of needs. Now look, uh, Najee Harris is a, is a very intriguing prospect. I know that Mike Tomlin has, you know, let people know in that building he likes him uh, quite a bit. And Travis Etienne, we, we know what his uh, college accomplishments were. Also, I think Miami may take Harris before the Steelers even pick, so that would take that one off the table. Uh, they need to rebuild that offensive line. When, when they were humming offensively, when they were um, racking up yards on the ground and through the air, it was because they had rebuilt and replenished their offensive line. Um, that's a need. Uh, the defensive line, Stephon Tuitt, Cam Hayward, could those be guys who start hitting the wall at some point this season? That's an area of concern replacing Bud Dupree and then corner's been an issue forever and they've lost a few corners. So 
Um, when, when you look at all that in its totality and, and the running back being dependent in large degree on an offensive line and them still having question marks there, when I talk to people in that organization, could they take a running back? Sure, they took a running back in the mid-rounds last year. Um, are, are they locked into running back with one of their first two picks? Uh-uh. And this one, it's our version of Final Jeopardy. The answer is Aaron Rodgers. The question, who are the nine teams that may be interested in him? Oh, look, as we, as we sit here today, Jenny, there, there, there are any number of teams that are still having one eye on that situation, watching the Cold War, the passive-aggressive war of what's said and unsaid between him and the Packers. Uh, and he, because of his wherewithal, what he's accomplished in this league and where he is contractually, will be able to steer himself out of Green Bay, and he could always play the retirement card too, uh, if he likes. And a lot of people think that's where this is going. So a team like Seattle, where you've got a John Schneider who was a part of that front office in Green Bay when they brought in Aaron Rodgers. You know, Denver, are they going to get Teddy Bridgewater? I think they will, but that's sort of a rent-to-own situation. It wouldn't preclude them from going after somebody like an Aaron Rodgers. Um, I, I mean, even teams that you would look at and say, okay, Carolina went and got Sam Darnold. They're going to pick up the fifth-year option. If you know Tepper at all, that owner, and Aaron Rodgers is available, and he thinks he's remotely close to winning in the next couple years, uh, he's going to be knocking on the GM's door saying, what do we have to do to get that guy? Uh, a lot of teams paying very close attention to that situation, and – We'll see where it goes over the next, uh, you know, nine to 11 months. All teams would be lucky to have Aaron Rodgers on their roster, that's for sure. JLC with the latest in the NFL, thank you so much for joining us. And it's coming up, all the latest in the NFL in preparation for the draft. you got to tune into the Pick 6 podcast. Our CBS crew, they'll get you up to speed in about 30 minutes each day so that you're always in the know. Make sure you tune in and follow along today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.